Hello there, my name is Anna Lundberg and I'm the founder of One Step Outside, where we help people around the world create a business and build a lifestyle that brings them more freedom, flexibility and fulfillment. And we've been talking about personal branding for the last few weeks. A couple of weeks we kicked off with why personal branding is important. By the way, you have one whether you realise it or not, so you might as well manage it effectively. And then last week we began to look at a framework for how you can think about what your personal brand might be, what kind of story you want to tell and those different elements. This week I thought it'd be interesting to explore why this is quite uncomfortable. So yes, you may realise it's important to manage your personal brand, you may have some ideas and feel a bit more confident after last week in terms of how you might go about building that, but it's still a little bit icky, it's a bit uncomfortable, a bit sort of sleazy almost to sell ourselves. So why is that? Well, I think first of all, there's a cultural element. So certainly in Northern Europe and Scandinavia, we're all supposed to be equal. We're not supposed to be smarter than, more beautiful than, better than in any way. In the UK, I think there's this idea of false modesty. We may know that we're good at something, but we're not supposed to say it. That's not really polite. Um, and I think there's a new idea of the humble brag coming over from the US as well. So culturally, it's not particularly nice. It's this association with the sleazy used car salesman, that idea of selling, like, oh, it's so pushy and promotional, those spammy emails we get. So that's one piece. The other piece, I think, is that when we come from being a full-time employee, we're not used to having to sell. As an employee, I have the backing of a big business, big brand that's been around for a long time. So I don't have to start from scratch and persuade people to buy from me. I've already got that established heritage. Secondly, because it's a big company, there probably is a sales department. Marketing and sales are two different things, as I've recently discovered. So I was over there doing my brand marketing thing and there were lots of other little fantastic people um, who were off doing their amazing sales thing. So I didn't actually have to sell so much, although of course I did a bit of intern internal selling and persuading and so on. And then finally, hopefully, we have a manager, a boss, who's doing the internal selling for us in the sense of telling people how amazing we are, how we deserve that promotion, that salary increase. There's not so much that we're actually doing to actively manage our personal brand and to sell ourselves. So why is it so important suddenly when we own a business? Well, first of all, um, as uncomfortable as it is, if we're not selling, we're not making money, and if we're not making money, it's not a business. So fundamentally, that makes it a hobby um, or a charity, and that's fine, but if you want to run a business, you do actually need to sell. Secondly, as much as success is so much more than money, having the sales, having the clients, having that money is what enables all those other wonderful things that you want to do. So the freedom, the flexibility, the fulfillment, that only comes if you have a secure income, if you have the money coming in with your business. And lastly, and the most important piece perhaps, is that you can only help people via selling. So yes, I can give you all sorts of free advice and resources and so on, but the best way for me to help you get the results you wanna to get, to make the progress you want to make, to give you that high level support, is for you to work with me. So it's in your interest, in a way, for me to sell to you. So it's important to reframe the way you think about selling and think about it as helping as serving people rather than as pushing something that they don't want because that's not the idea here we're not trying to push something onto someone who has no interest or need for your particular product or service we're trying to find the people who resonate with our bigger mission who share our values and who love what we do who want what we have want what we can give them so reframing selling as serving i think is really cool and has certainly been incredibly helpful for me with getting more comfortable with this now that means going back to the start with why idea that we talked about last week at two levels. On one level, understanding your why for the business. Why do you care so much about this particular product or service? What is it you ultimately wanna help your clients with? What's the bigger picture, the results, the impact that you're trying to make in the world? That's really gonna help you because if you understand, oh my goodness, if I can sell to all these people, they're all going to have better this, feel more that, um, you know, happier, have more money, lose more weight, whatever it is that you help people with. So the more you sell, the bigger impact you can have. So understanding your big why for business is critical. But understanding your personal why is really important too. What can selling more mean for you, your life and your family? So getting five more clients, 10 more clients, 1,000 pounds more, 10,000 pounds more, what will that mean for you, your family, your lifestyle? Can you, if you have higher rates, work fewer hours? 
take more time off, take more holidays, take more expensive holidays? Can you say no to those pesky clients that you hate and just work with the really lovely ones that you want to work with, all the interesting projects and so on? So really understanding your personal why for selling being important to you. So those are two ways of thinking about it. What's the bigger picture? How are you going to have a bigger impact? Why do you care about selling for the client's sake? And then secondly, why do you care about for your own sake? So most importantly though, I really want you to reframe how you're thinking about selling. Selling is around serving. Try to get away from that sort of stereotypical, promotional, sleazy salesman image and think about, okay, how am I going to show up? How am I, how am I going to help these people? By the way, there is no obligation to be sleazy or unethical, certainly. There's no reason why you need to copy what other people are doing. You don't need to lie. You don't need to use sort of underhand tactics. It is about showing up, again, owning that mission, your values, your skills and strengths, being able to have those conversations, understanding people's problems, being able to help them and so on. So try to rethink how you think about selling. And we want this to become a really natural part of the flow of the business that you're doing, rather than that really uncomfortable thing that you tag on at the end. Oh, ah, um, by the way, these are my prices. Oh, um, I have this program, would you like to buy it maybe? Oh, I don't know, it's probably too expensive for you. That's not very helpful. So we want to get to the point where it's a really natural flow from, oh, okay, I understand you have this problem. Well, I think a great idea would be if you did this, that and the other, this solution, how does that sound? What would that mean to you? By the way, I think this would be the perfect program for you. We're starting next week and it's going to help you do X, Y, Z. Do you want me to tell you more about that and so on? So there's a natural way of flowing into the sales conversation that's going to be very important, again, for you to help your clients and for you to ultimately get that freedom, flexibility, fulfillment and all the wonderful things that you're trying to um, get from having this business. So I hope that um, gave you some things to ponder in terms of rethinking how you look at selling and that idea of the personal brand again. And we are gonna be continuing the personal brand uh, topic. So watch out again here on the video, the blog onestepoutside.com forward slash blog. And you can listen as well if you prefer to do that on the go at the podcast reimaginingsuccesspodcast.com. I'll see you back here next week. Bye for now.